Alright, so this video is going to be about the first part of solving a Rubik's 4x4 cube. So, um, what you need to do when solving this cube is first you're going to need to know the notation. Alright, the notation is pretty much the same as the 3x3, but instead of being an I for inverted, it's going to be an apostrophe or a prime symbol. That means the same thing as a lowercase i, because lower we're not going to use a lowercase i anymore because lowercase letters mean different things. So when you see a capital letter, that means turn the outermost face. So if the move that I just did was u prime. The move that I just did now was U. The move that I just did now was right. Or prime. So basically that's how you judge it. So the famous algorithm, right inverted, down inverted, right down, would be called R prime, D prime, right down. See what I mean? Now there. Now what about the what about the inner layers? When you see a star, or when I say star, that means turn both layers. So for example, the first move in one of the parity algorithms, two R star, that means turn both of the that means turn the R star layer, which is both the outer and the inner layer, by 180 degrees. So, pretty simple notation, but what about the inner layers? That's a lowercase letter. So, for example, this would be too little r. When I say regular r or right, that always means turn the outer face. But when I say little r, that means turn the middle, that means turn the inner layer. That little r move is the first in another parity algorithm. And so here is the basic mentality to solving a cube larger than a 3 by 3. First solve the center. First solve all the centers and make sure that they're in the right spot. Then pair up the edges. You'll see what I mean by that. Then solve the cube as much as you can, like a 3x3. Three three. If it's an odd numbered cube, you can solve it completely like a 3x3. Three three. For example, the 5x5. Five five. But I'm using the 4x4, four four, so I might not be able to solve it completely as a 3x3. Three three. I'm going to have some even numbered cube parity errors. And those will happen on all even numbered cubes. The 4x4. Four uh, except for the 2x2. Two two. The 4x4, 6x6, 8x8, 10x10, virtual 20x20, 20 20, virtual 100x100, 100 100, virtual 1000x1000. Hun thousand but all those have a rudiment of solving this cube. So what you're going to need to do, what you're going to need to know to solve that cube, this one, is how to solve a regular Rubik's Cube and the notation I just gave to you. So, without further ado, let's scramble this baby up and start going. And scrambling means twisting all possible layers as many times as you want. And you might, you might notice how well this thing turns because I lubricate it with silicone spray. You really want to scramble this thing up good so you, it's not completely simple. Make sure that no edges are, that almost no edges are paired up. Alright, there we go. That looks like a pretty scrambled cube. Alright, the first thing you want to do is to solve a center. So pick a side to start with. I always choose the green side. So pick two green dots on adjacent sides 
Uh, put two green dots on adjacent sides and match them up to form a green bar. Then make another green bar without hurting this one. All right, where's the other green piece? Ugh. It's over there. Well, I still won't hurt that. I'll just move it. And then you simply rotate it and match up the two green bars to form the green center. Congratulations, you solved your first center. Easy. Now you solve the blue center. Make sure you put your solved side down just like you did when solving the Rubik's Cube. And for this you're going to have to learn a quick three move algorithm. So make a blue bar, then pick a position where you want your blue bar to go. I'd put it in this empty slot. I'd actually rather not harm the yellow bar. So I would do this. R star, two up, R prime star. And that algorithm you'll be using a lot with those centers. Easy to remember. Just bring it up, shift it out of the way, bring it back down. And you did not hurt the green center when doing that. So make another blue bar with this piece you just brought down. If you end up with three pieces on the blue center, then you bring one, then you try to bring that piece down by kicking out this blue bar and using the blue bar to kick that single piece up. Use the algorithm again, you solved your second center. Now for the harder centers, the middle layer. So pick a center to solve first. I usually pick red because I like red. So solve it just like the green. No use for algorithms here. And I actually think I might solve the, the yellow first because it has that three thing. So what you want to do is put the unsolved on put the unsolved on one side and make sure that your you want a line to go up and you want it to land so that it goes yellow other tile. So you want it to land that way, yellow other tile. You'll see what I mean. You kick out the full bar, rotate the top layer once, bring the full bar back. And that didn't mess up. That couldn't have messed up much. So now you want to start working on another center. First, you want to make sure that the center is in the right place. So the first center that you solve in the middle in the middle layer could be the right in the right is always in the right place. But the second one, you need to make sure that it's in the right place. If you solve the white one next, then you have to make sure that it's opposite the yellow. If you solve the red one next, you have to make sure that the blue side is on the top and the red is to the left of the yellow. And that's what I'm doing. So if you already have a bar, try to put it on that side and make it vertical if you hold it with green and blue on the sides. Now try and make another bar, but here you will need to use the algorithm. So you bring it up, one U, bring it down. You do one up turn in that situation. Now kick out that bar, two U, bring it back in. And that solves the first two, the first four centers. The last two are a bit trickier because they must be solved simultaneously. So d do the same thing if you have a bar. Try to bring it up on the side it's supposed to go. This is orange. I know that that should be orange because that's yellow and white's opposite yellow. To you, back. And then we have two three, two threesomes. That's easy to solve. Match it up, form two bars, and then bring the bar back. Congratulations, you just solved your centers. And now I'm going to teach you edge pairing, the basics. So with edge pairing, it's not really an algorithm that you need to learn. It's more like a sequence. So what you want to do is you want to have two edge pieces, kitty corner from each other. That means when you turn the top layer, they will line up like that. 
but you messed up your centers. So you're going to want to bring this out of the way, make another edge piece get split up, and realign the centers. Oh, I got lucky I realigned an edge piece. So you keep doing that until you have two or less edge pieces left, unpaired. All right, so I'll actually demonstrate this to you again. All right, kitty corner. Realign the centers. All right, here's an example that I haven't covered yet when they're across from each other. You can't get them together that way. So what you want, so what you want to do is you want to bring this up, bring this down, and then rotate the top layer, and now they're kitty corner. So let me illustrate that to you again. So it's right, front inverted, up, and they're kitty corner. Or what you can do instead is do a 2R, and then when you match it up, do a 2U star, and that'll match it up. And when you realign the centers, do a 2U star again. Ooh. Here's that algorithm I showed you before, because I find it a lot easier. The person who taught me how to solve the Rubik's Cube calls it the magic algorithm. I don't really call it anything because I don't really like it that much. I don't use it that much. I don't make such a big deal of it. And just keep edge pairing the 12 edges together until you're stuck with either no edges left unpaired or two edges left unpaired. Now you have a parity error. Your first parity error, which stinks. I hate parity errors. So let's fix it right here. You have to fix it right here or else you can't move on. So here's the algorithm. D star, R, R, yeah big R, right, and front, F prime, U, align that so it will align, and align that so it will align, and then bring it back. Let me demonstrate that to you one more time. D star, R, F prime, so that these are in the same orientation, and you have a blank tile up here, and an unsolved one here, a uh, solved one here, and an unsolved one here. And so, solved one here, unsolved one here. You do a U, then you try and realign these as best as you can with the right first and the front, and then you realign it. Here's with the fast little finger trick. I think I did it wrong. Ay, ay, ay. It's supposed to go that way. I had a little brain cramp myself. Even speed keepers get brain cramps. And now, you should be able to solve this as much as you can as a 3x3. I'm not going to go into detail on it. Just solve it like a 3x3. And I'll see you in the next video with the parody errors.